Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Davidson from Redeemer Lutheran Church in Lancaster, Ohio. Welcome to our abbreviated worship service for Sunday, January 31st, 2021. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. We continue our sermon series on 1 Peter. Today, our text is from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourself with the same way of thinking. For whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. So as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh, no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. For the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of Jesus, dear friends. William Wilberforce was elected a member of British Parliament in 1780. He was one of the youngest people elected to Parliament at that time. He was elected during a time when England was facing the, a war with America. It was called the American Revolutionary War. The slave trade was big business that time. At that time, during the uh, time of uh, the Revolutionary War in Britain, but that was about to change. It was during Wilberforce's second term in office that he became a Christian, and he sought then to apply his Christian faith to his life and to his political career. Within the next several years, he joined a movement to abolish the British slave trade. He sought many reforms, and as a result of his work, Parliament abolished slavery in 1833, just a few days before his death. Wilberforce sought to use his Christian freedom not to serve himself, but to serve others. Freedom today means a lot of things to a lot of different people, but normally if you were asked a person on the street what freedom means, they would say it's the freedom or the ability to do or to think or to speak whatever you want in whatever circumstance. You're free. You can do what you want when you want. Freedom, though, for the Christian is something entirely different. Christians have been set free from the power of sin, Satan, and death. We belong to Jesus. As believers in Christ, we've been forgiven in Christ, set free from the bonds of sin so that we might live our life to the glory of God. How should we live our lives? It's a question that a lot of people have today. Do we live our lives for ourselves? Or do we live our lives for others? Do we live according to the passions of the flesh? Or do we live according to the will of God? Now these were real questions that the Christians to whom Peter was writing to had in their day and age. These early Christians had no country to call their own. They were looked down upon and despised by those whom they live with in their communities. The norm at that time was, was for people to live in freedom, doing what they want when they wanted, to live according to their passions and pleasures. It was a no-holds-barred way of life, described by Peter as living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, lawlessness, and idolatry. Peter, though, says that Christians are called to live differently. In fact, Christians are different. Just listen to what Peter says. He says, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had received no mercy, but now you have received mercy. Behold, beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable so what, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. These Christians understood what Peter was talking about. 
they were bought with a price, the price of Jesus' shed blood on Calvary. And so now they are called to live their lives in honor of God, in freedom, in loving one another. Jesus has purchased you, dear friend, from sin, Satan, and death. You don't belong to yourself. You don't belong to the world. You belong to Jesus. And God gives you freedom now not to live as the world lives. God gives you the freedom to live according to his will, as revealed in his holy word. So many people today fly off the handle and they live according to their own passions, their own emotions. They seek to use their freedom to their own advantage. But the Bible says for Christians, it's different. We are to have the same attitude that Jesus had who though he was in the form of God did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he humbled himself. He lived his life as a servant to the point of giving his life for others. Christ has set you free, but your freedom is not to be lived and used according to your passions. You're not called by God to live according to your emotions. You're called to live your life according to the Word of God. Freedom is different for the Christian, and it shows in the way we live. The Bible explains what type of Christian freedom we have and what this actually looks like. For freedom, Christ has set you free. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. This freedom that you have has been given to you because of Jesus' shed blood on the cross of Calvary. You've been grafted into the body of Christ. You belong to Jesus as a result of your baptism. Your sins have been washed away. You now are a child of God, called by God to live your life to the glory of God. Martin Luther explained this in a wonderful little book that he wrote during the time of the Reformation. It's called The Freedom of the Christian. In this book, he describes what Christian freedom is like. It's a life of paradoxes, living between two paradoxes. These two statements that Luther wrote summarize the Christian life. They don't contradict each other, but they explain each other, and both are true. Luther wrote, that a Christian is utterly a free man, Lord of all, subject to none. A Christian is truly free. But then he also wrote, a Christian is an utterly dutiful servant, servant of all, subject to all. We are called to use our freedom, not to serve ourselves, but we are called to serve Jesus. Too many people today think that Christianity is all about having a good attitude or believing in something so that you can get something that you want. Others think that Christianity is a type of religion where that you are free to do what you want. But the Christian faith, according to the Bible, is different. Christian faith is one of believing in Jesus, taking up your cross and following Jesus. We've been set free free not to do what we want but we're free by the power of the holy spirit to do what jesus calls us to do to live for one another it's a freedom that seeks to use the freedom given by jesus to love and care for one another inside of the church and also outside of the church as well this means that we live a life of love using our freedom not to indulge our passions not to give in to our emotions but to live and behave in a manner worthy of Christ, to practice the fruits of the Spirit, living in love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, self-control, and generosity for others. The needs of the world today are enormous. And one Christian and one small church might think there's nothing that we can do to really make an impact to change things. But God tells us that it's different. And he's at work in and through us. You and I have been called and been given a wonderful freedom in Jesus Christ to use that freedom to help and to serve others. There was a time at the end of Jesus' ministry where a woman came up to Jesus and she had a, a jar of expensive ointment, of expensive perfume. 
She broke open that jar and poured that expensive ointment, that expensive perfume on Jesus' head. And when the disciples saw this, they were indignant and said, this, this perfume is expensive and could have been sold. And the money that we, were, we have raised could have been given to the poor. But it's interesting to note what Jesus said. Jesus said, leave her alone. Don't trouble her. She's doing something good for me. She has done what she could. We may not think that we're able to do anything of significance for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in our lives. But the Lord tells us what we do in his name. We do for him and he works in and through us so that we might touch others with the love of Jesus. And in doing so, we accomplish much good. For when we use our freedom to help others, we show the love of Christ and witness to others our faith in Jesus. And so, dear friends, make the most of the opportunities God gives you each and every day to live, not for yourself, not the way the world lives, but to live for Jesus, to the glory of God, and in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep both our hearts and minds through faith in the one Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the blessing of the Lord our God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be abide with you now and always. Amen. I want to thank you for joining us for this abbreviated worship service for Sunday, January 31st, 2021. It's coming to you from Redeemer Lutheran Church, 1400 Concordia Drive, Lancaster, Ohio. If you have no church home, we invite you to make Redeemer your church home. We worship every Sunday morning at 10, 10 15. We would love to have you as a part of our family. And if you'd like to support this ministry with your tithes and offerings, please Consider doing so by sending your tithes and offerings to Redeemer Lutheran Church, 1400 Concordia Drive, Lancaster, Ohio, 43130. Till next week, may the Lord bless you and keep you as you live your life and use your Christian freedom to the glory of God and in Jesus' name.